Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Kishwani. <coughs> I have been solving math problems out of this book here, practicing to take the GRE, General Test, the 10th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase it immediately. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 228, number 13. Quantitative comparison question number 13 out of the 10th edition of the GRE book. The book that I just that I just showed you here. Let's take a look at it, see what it says. We are being asked to compare two quantities. This and x plus 3 times x plus 3 versus x squared plus 9. When this exam was given, 31 31% 31 of the people, only 31% of the people who took this particular exam got this question right. Almost 70%, 7 out of 10 people, 69% got this question wrong. And the reason why they're getting it wrong probably is because they are thinking, well, this is x squared and this is 9, that's one, probably that's one reason. The second reason why they are getting it wrong probably is because if you have watched my previous clips, you probably know by now that if you're going to plug in numbers in this problem, which is a great technique, just plug in numbers, forget the algebra. If you're going to plug in numbers, you have to remember one thing. Excuse me. In your school years, your math teacher told you that there are even numbers, there are odd numbers, there are even numbers, there are odd numbers, there are prime numbers, there are fractions, there are whole numbers, there are there are there are negative numbers, there are positive numbers, there are there are also rational numbers, irrational numbers, there are whole sorts of numbers there. Similarly, for the standardized exam, not just the GRE, any is any standardized exam anywhere in the world, if you're going to take, for any standardized exam, there are. Uh, the, there is one thing that you have to keep in mind about numbers. Numbers, as far as the standardized exam is concerned, come in two flavors. So let's talk about the two flavors of numbers. I spell flavor here without the U for those of you watching outside the US. Uh, it's not misspelled, that's just the way it's spelled here. Anyway, they come in two flavors. Numbers come in two flavors. This is gonna get this is gonna get quite complicated, so pay attention. One is what I call one is what I call the nice numbers, which is any whole positive number. Any whole positive number qualifies as a nice number with one exception which we'll talk about in a second. And then there are nasty numbers. The nastiest of all, the nastiest of all that you always have to keep in mind. Because you see, in these questions when you pick the answer choices, when you pick an answer choice A, B, C, D, if you pick an answer choice A, what you're claiming is that the quantity in column A is always bigger. That is what you're claiming and therefore you have to you have to cover your bases, you have to make sure that you think of all the different possibilities, all the weird scenarios. And these are the weird scenarios. The nastiest fall is zero. You always make sure that you that you that you uh, that you cover zero. The next nastiest one is one. And then you have negatives and then you have your fractions. And if you keep the, if you keep this simple thing in mind, if you keep this simple thing in mind, you'll be fine. And that's what you have to do here, because that's what you're claiming. If you pick A for the answer choice, what you're claiming is that the quantity in column A is always bigger. Not just for the numbers that you picked here, but always bigger. If you're picking B for the answer choice, what you're claiming is that the quantity in column B is always bigger. 
and if you pick C, what you're claiming is that the two quantities are always equal. Even though, even though on the top of the page, if you look at it, they leave out the word always. They do not use the word always, but that's what they're claiming here. Page number 228, let's see if we can find quickly. Here's your page 228, right here. And if you look at the book there, on top of your page, of your book there, it says A, if the quantity in column A is greater. They, they do not tell you always, but that's what they mean. That's what, that's what A means. They should insert the word always in capital letters, but unfortunately, they do not. So anyway, for example, if I plug in a nice number, nice whole number, for example, if you plug in two here, if I plug in two for X, then 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 times 5 is 5, that's 25, and here if I plug in 2, 2 squared plus 9, that's going to give me 13. It seems like, it seems like the answer is A, and you, you, and, you, and you might think that you're done. The answer is A. Well, what if, what, if, uh, what if X happens to be one of these scenarios? Because all they tell you is that, actually they don't tell you anything at all about X. The x could be anything, it could, x could even be fraction, it could even be negative. I was about to say that all they tell you is that x is, x is an integer, but they don't even tell you that, it's, a, it's an open field, x, x doesn't even have to be an integer, it doesn't even have to be a whole number. It could also be fraction, so, but before you worry about, before you waste your time with the negative and fraction, let's try with a 0 and 1, let's see what happens. What if x were 0? Let me redo it in red pen on the bottom here. If x were 0, if x were 0, you get 0 plus 3, which is 3 times 3 is 9, and here you have 0 squared plus 9, you get a 9, the answer is C. Before the answer was A, now the answer is C. You get a conflicting answer. And therefore, because you're getting conflicting answer, therefore the answer is D. The correct answer here is D. And that's all. Uh, that's what it is. You just have to plug in numbers. And don't just plug in nice numbers. Make sure you that you cover your bases. And as I said, you don't have to do all four of them because as soon as I did zero, I get a conflicting answer. I'm done. I don't have to try out all the others. If I had gotten the same answer, I would have tried one more time, maybe two more times, depending on depending on my mood, depending on how much time I have, depending on how much I want to invest into it. But anyway, let me redo the same problem one more time, a little bit differently. So that's it. We're done. The answer is answer is answer is D. Let me look at the clock in the back. We have eight minutes into it. Let me redo one more time. Same problem, but a little bit differently. Another way you could have, another way you could have solved this problem is by realizing that x times x is x squared and then x times 3 is 3x and 3 times x is 3x so we get 6x and then finally three times three is nine and on those side you have x squared plus nine what I want you to understand is exactly what it is that they want you to compare. Since x squared appears on both sides, it plays no role. Since 9 appears on both sides, it plays no role. Basically what they want you to, what, what they are asking you to do is compare 6 times x versus 0. Which one is bigger? They want, they want you to, they want you, want, you, want you to tell them whether this quantity is bigger or this quantity is bigger, whether they are equal. Again, if you jump to the conclusion that 6 has got to be more than 0, you are wrong because it depends on the value of x. If x were negative, this quantity would be smaller and 0 would be bigger. If x were positive, this quantity would be bigger and 0 would be smaller. Or if x were 0, the both quantities would be equal to each other. So, if x is negative, this is 0, the answer would be B. If x were positive, the answer would be A. If x were 0, the answer would be C. As you can see, there are conflicting answers there, for the correct answer is D. That's all. This is, the, this is another way of doing this thing. The x squared do not play any role, and nines do not play any role. Basically, we are left with 6x, and there is nothing left here which is same as 0. 
I hope you found this helpful. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring or if you wish to buy the solution manuals to these problems, in either case, go to my website at www.prep.prep.com and send me an email. Alright? Thanks.